battery degradation, the slow physical changes that occur in battery packs that ultimately affect the battery's ability to store charge is something that we're all familiar with in the modern world. Everything from laptop computers and smartphones to electric cars suffer from it. And while the answer to losing charge on your smartphone or computer is often to replace the battery or the unit itself, battery degradation in electric cars is a tougher nut to crack because battery packs for electric cars are pretty darned expensive. In fact, it's the reason why electric cars are traditionally more expensive than comparable internal combustion engine vehicles. In extreme cases, such as an early Nissan Leaf living in Arizona, battery degradation can be swift and brutal, knocking off significant amounts of the car's usable range in short order. In other instances, battery degradation appears to be minimal or not even noticeable. Just how much your electric car's battery degrades over time depends on how the car's battery pack was built and the presence or not of active thermal management, the climate where you live, your own specific habits when it comes to charging and driving, and how far you regularly drive your car. As a rule, cars with active thermal management, usually in the form of a specially designed liquid cooling system, suffer less battery degradation than those without, which is why the early Nissan Leafs suffered so much from premature battery aging. Hot weather will degrade your car's battery pack more quickly than more temperate weathers will, and those who rapid charge their cars a lot and or push their car's battery packs to the absolute limits, charging them to 100% full and then draining them until almost empty, will also suffer more degradation on average than those who just use their car to get to and from work and rarely rapid charge. So far, my statements on battery degradation and range loss over time have been, well, pretty generic because trying to codify the complicated science of battery degradation in a five or 10 minute YouTube video is nigh on impossible. But in the last two weeks, a couple of videos have surfaced on YouTube that do give us some good yard arms to measure battery degradation of two different cars by, the Tesla Model X and Chevrolet Bolt EV. In both cases, the two cars, owned by Bjorn Nyland of the Tesla Bjorn YouTube channel and Eric Way of the News Coulomb YouTube channel respectively, highlight that the two cars have been driven pretty hard by their owners, rapid charged a lot, and still retain a decent amount of range. Bjorn's car first. While Bjorn's Tesla Model X P90D, or Optimus Prime as he likes to call it, now has some pretty high mileage, he had the car's battery pack replaced under warranty at 116,000 kilometers, that's 72,000 miles. Since then, he's been keeping a tight watch on the performance of the battery pack. And last week, he released a new video on his channel. There's a link below, as well as above, if you're watching this on YouTube, detailing that after 75,000 kilometers, that's 46,600 miles, his car's battery pack had lost 6% of its original capacity. When it was new, Bjorn's battery was rated at 82 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. Now its maximum user capacity appears to be 77.2 kilowatt hours, resulting in a drop from the EPA approved original range from 257 miles of the as new pack to 229 miles of range or thereabouts. What about the Bolt? Well, according to Eric's video, again, there are links included, he details that his 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV has driven a total of 70,000 miles, that's 113,000 kilometers, give or take, since new. At this milestone, he's calculated that his Bolt EV has lost around 8% of its original capacity, equal to a 15 or 20 mile, 30 to 40 kilometer loss in range. As to the methodology for both capacity tests, well, both owners detail that in their respective videos, but it's an important thing to note here that they both state they've been pretty hard on their cars, with frequent long distance trips dipping into lower percentages of remaining charge, plenty of rapid charging, and the kind of charge cycles that have gone beyond the 90% limit that many owners are recommended that you don't charge above in daily driving. Bjorn also did a lot of towing with Optimus Prime during his recorded mileage, which again puts extra stress on the battery pack because it requires a higher constant power draw than driving without a trailer would. High-speed driving also adds to the mix with some trips to Germany and German autobahns. 
Eric's long-distance trips often saw him dip into single percentages when arriving at rapid charging stations, meaning the Bolt EV battery pack, while liquid-cooled like Tesla's are, was certainly worked harder than it would be in your average Bolt EV, including mine. In addition, Eric notes that the car appeared to lose two kilowatt hours of capacity immediately following a recalibration software update issued by GM to its cars in order to address incorrect battery pack calibration from the factory. If you take this into consideration, Duration, he says actual degradation might be closer to 5 or 6 percent rather than 8. So what does this all teach us? Well, it reiterates that battery packs with active thermal management, read liquid cooling, suffer far less battery degradation than a car without active thermal management. Our Nissan Leaf, for example, with 77,000 miles on the clock, has lost more than 22 percent of its original capacity. And unlike the two cars I've just mentioned, it hasn't been used for extreme long distance cycles or charged rapidly very much at all. Instead, it's just been a daily commuter. It also shows that for your average electric car owner who covers likely no more than 20,000 miles or 32,000 kilometers in a year, well, they're not likely to see any massive battery capacity loss in their car. And by that, I mean capacity loss so severe, it renders the car impractical to use during the lifetime with their car. Finally, it shows that buying larger capacity battery packs with active thermal management means that you've got a lot more buffer than you might otherwise have. And if you follow the advice that Eric and Bjorn have on their channels, which include not charging all the way up to full, not draining the car to single digit range, and generally not doing what they do, then capacity loss shouldn't be a problem for you. There is one final thing I'd like to add too. While leasing isn't something I'd recommend for internal combustion engine cars, leasing your EV can be a great way to insulate yourself from any potential battery degradation issues. So if you're still worried about this, lease is probably the way to go. That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.